Okay. It's a little bit after the top of the hour, so we're going to go ahead and start as people uh, continue to pile in. Just want to welcome everybody to today's panel discussion, uh, navigating the AMR landscape, uh, determining the best solution for your business goals. Before we get started, just wanted to let everybody know this webinar is being recorded. We will send that recording out to everyone that's registered via email within the next couple days. So please keep an eye out for that. Uh, we also want to keep this discussion as interactive as possible. Um, so if you have any questions, um, please feel free to put them into the Q&A box and we're going to try and answer them as we go. If we don't get to them during the discussion, there is 15 minutes at the end of the webinar um, allotted to some Q&A as well. We're also going to throw up a few polls here and there, so um, feel free to answer those as they pop up during the discussion. So before we get started, <clears throat> I want to quickly dive into the inspiration behind uh, this discussion. So as many of you know, the robotics industry has been growing at a rapid pace. I think anyone that's attended ProMat um, or Automate could probably attest to the fact that there seems to be 100 new robotics distributors every day. Um, so to say the least, the marketplace seems a little convoluted and crowded, probably confusing to some people at this point. So our goal here is to help uh, navigate uh, you through this complex landscape and hopefully help you make some informed uh, business decisions and maybe figure out if AMR solutions are a good fit for your business. <clears throat> so with that, I'm going to introduce our speakers today. First, we have Monthan Poir. Monthan is currently serving as the product manager for autonomous mobile robotics at Barcodes. <clears throat> he plays a crucial role in coordinating the business plans and go-to market strategy for robotics initiatives. With a master's degree, in robotics from NYU, Monthan brings with him a wealth of experience spanning over eight years in various domains, including medical robotics, mobile robotics, business development, program management, product management, engineering, and research. At Barcodes, Monthan's primary uh, focus lies in the development and expansion of uh, comprehensive autonomous mobile robotics solutions, as well as integra integration infrastructure uh, that support them. <clears throat> Next, we have David Lin. David is a mobile robotics expert at Zebra Technologies uh, for the Fetch Robotics portfolio. He has over 18 years of experience working in various programs, management roles in global manufacturing and distribution industries, including e-commerce e operations. Currently, he's the product manager at Zebra Robotics Automation, le leading strategic initiatives for autonomous mo mobile robot solutions. <clears throat> And lastly, we have Michael Ray. Mike is the North American channel sales leader for robotics automation at Zebra Technologies and has 18 years in warehouse distribution systems and automation. Mike joined Zebra through the Fetch acquisition in August, 2021. At Fetch, Mike led partners and alliances after spending 15 years at Manhattan Associates. 14 of those years were in the professional services organization designing, deploying, and implementing MA's WMS solutions with the last year spent working with MA's partners and, and alliances in alliances. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Michael, who will serve as our guide and a key contributor in this panel discussion. Great, thank you, Brendan. Thank you for that introduction. It's great to be here, great to be, be with everyone in, on the panel as well. Um, I'm first going to open up a question. I think you mentioned ProMat, and I think a lot of people on this call that went to ProMat, they went to Automate, they saw what you were talking about, this, this dearth of, of robots coming at you, whether it was fixed automation, whether it was the Thomas Mobile robots, we'll talk about that a lot here. Um, but so with that, seeing all that, there must be a lot of confusion out there. Um, I have, I'm going to open up to, to Mantham and ask him a question of, you know, We've seen some some consolidation here in the recent couple of months, and and, and with your background and, and and your experience, how how does consolidation of this this ever growing industry impact the selection of the of for partners and solutions, and why is it important to choose the right ones? Yeah, so you know, uh, great uh, great question, by the way, Mike. So. AMRs, a uh, relatively new technology and new industry, 
really started with uh, you know Kiva Systems and then Amazon acquiring Kiva Systems. But uh, what you'll see is all the AMR manufacturers are are still in that startup phase, right? Wherein there's not a lot of uh, support infrastructure uh, behind the scenes for deployed robots. And uh, consolidation is playing a key role behind this, whether it's you know Zebra acquiring Fetch and all the acquisitions that, ha that are happening in the industry. Uh, a few things that is bringing to the table. Number one, uh, once you deploy these robots, the support infrastructure is, is a key. Because again, this is a relatively new technology. It needs constant care, hyper care behind the scenes to make them, you know, fully autonomous and fully running. So uh, that's one. And number two is it's becoming a traditional marketplace, right? Wherein we we talk about AIDC technology, right? It's it's a traditional marketplace now. Uh, AMRs aren't there, but uh, with the, with the consolidation, I think it, it's it's on the way to become a mature marketplace. So yeah, again, you know, it's a crowded place, a lot of consolidation happening. So I always, you know, recommend uh, you know, end users to, to really look at a few things. You know, number one, uh, the AMRs you're looking at, do they have the support infrastructure even any, right? Uh, well, probably, you know, you'll deploy uh, you know, hundreds of robots, but then are they gonna keep running for the duration of the time period, right? let's say three years and five years down the road. And uh, number two is, is really the installation time. What consolidation brings is a massive deployment and installation and system integration infrastructure. And where that's where you know, barcodes in place, where you know, we, we support fetch uh, to do the actual in installations and deployments and, and support beyond the sales. So that that's what you know. It's this this consolidation phase is really about, and 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 the two key component that it's bringing is the installation and and, and uh, support. Uh, I, David, do you want to add anything? What what do you see? Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's great input, man. Then I agree, I agree. I think I think you're seeing um a whole new crop of you know providers you know coming and 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 going. I think there's you know, there's always going to be differences in, in the technology, you know, for each and the infrastructure safety support is, is definitely key. You know, I think when you look across, um, you know, it's important to focus on, uh, you know, your specific workflow and to see if there's a, a, a good fit, but once you do, then it's kind of like, okay, um, uh, how is this supplier or vendor's, you know, history of deployment, you know, uh, into dynamic environments or or environments, you know, similar to 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 where you would run, you know, uh, these solutions. And, you know, of course, speaking on behalf of Zebra, also if you pull back a little bit, you think about the larger ecosystem as well. And and what I mean by that is like, okay, so uh, you have robots. That's <laughs> that's all great. But then do you have, uh, you know, global support, you know, right? Do you have uh, complementary uh, products to work along with that automation? It could be, you know, machine vision. It could be cameras. It could be, you know, fixed scanners, RFID, um, a, a, a broad product portfolio, again, to, to make the most of, of an automation solution. So, so all things to consider. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Um, both you, both Dave and Mantham, you both mentioned deployment. So I'll kind of pull on that thread for a second here and dive down a little deeper. And Mantham, what do you see? I mean, there's there's con you know, a lot of confusion and noise out there with the AMR vendors and solutions, but what do you see are the key driving factors for warehouse uh, uh, automation adoption, right? So what are, what are those driving factors you're seeing right now to, to make people, you know, roll out the pilots, do the actual deployments of these of these new technologies. So, you know, yeah, again, fantastic. So, you know, there are really different domains uh, through which you can see this, the lens you can put on and then see different markets and different time spans of how AMRs are driving, uh, you know, throughput and automation discussions and things like that. So. 
during covid a lot of these discussions around warehouse automation and robotics used to be about uh, e-commerce growth and and the boom of uh, e-commerce and it, it needing uh, the, the drive of increased throughputs and with increased throughputs how even a cope up with your automation and conveyors do that so uh, during that time frame a lot of discussions were around roi in and in, in improving roi uh, with roi you know everyone uh, started talking about robotics and then it was it, it's it was really easy uh once you show the roi customers would likely to adopt amrs but the scenario is completely flip in last few years and the roi discussion has quickly turned into labor shortage discussion right it's throughout the industry at least the us market is is that uh unless you know somehow millions of workers and uh, you know uh, in the, in the marketplace there is a tremendous labor shortage and uh the customer discussions are quickly flipping to how do i automate to uh cope up with the labor shortage because i i don't have 10 forklift drivers or i don't have uh, x number of warehouse associates so i need that amr automation to drive my business further along right so and and this is through time frame and then you'll also see some differences in different markets right uh, us as i said labor shortage is playing a key role and then uh, probably let's if you if you think about uh, mexico there's labor consistency issues right there's turnover issues there aren't consistent uh, warehouse associates available right uh, you you have availability but then the turnover is really high so that's what is driving amr discussions in mexico or or uh, you look at a different market completely which is healthcare back end logistics right there is a fda mandate coming up called uh, dscsa which is going to mandate tracking of goods uh, inside uh, supply chain for healthcare and amrs can do it really easily you don't even need any uh, you know additional infrastructure so within different time frames and different markets you're seeing now a different approach as to why amrs are adding value and then how they are being adopted that's awesome thanks mantham i I'm, i am going to come back to that roi uh, thread here in just a few minutes cuz i think a lot of people want to know about you know what is the return and what can they be expecting and what to look for and what you know inputs and factors uh, contribute to that but but first i want to ask uh, dave a question with his expertise in in the technology itself and then with the with the hardware and the software dave in, in what ways do you see the amrs bringing flexibility to not only warehouse operations but to the manufacturing floor Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think that's that's one of the significant advantages with um the mobile robotics versus, you know, uh fixed or legacy equipment for sure. Uh certainly over, you know, uh the traditional, you know, manual movement uh as well. But if you take a look at um a a a warehouse or a manufacturing shop floor, you know, um most of the material is 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 unidirectional uh, as far as the movement right you know you have your value stream when you look across um what you're doing in in the warehouse right your you have storage you have your production assembly uh testing and pack out um but as you transport those goods right from raw into work in progress or whip and into finished goods um you know generally you're you're working with a a single directional workflow well the flexibility that the amrs provide is that you know they can move in any direction so you start thinking about uh how that opens up uh you know uh your operation from a process improvement standpoint um or lean manufacturing and and less waste right so uh less idle time um higher utilization of not just the robotics but your um you know very valuable uh, assembly technicians and production staff as well so what that means is you can transport uh, uh m- material uh, forward and backward you know if you if 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 you're uh, building a a product and and going through a sub sub assembly and assembly uh if there's production fallout you can 
return those goods over to um, a troubleshooting area, for example, or QA. So, so there's a lot of flexibility in the actual physical movement of goods within uh, the floor in, in, in a warehouse. But you also have uh, the ability to deploy very quickly, okay, as, as Manthan mentioned, but you can, it, once you deploy, it's not fixed, right? Like, like for example, like a conveyor or a production line, it, you can deploy today and then modify for later as your needs change or grow. You can even have different workflows for your second shift for example. So you, you really start to maximize the value of something like this and, and, and change uh, the way you think about uh, uh, how, how your workflows are, are, are deployed on your floor. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, the flexibility is is truly endless. As you say, you could have different workflows for different shifts. Uh, you could have different right. you know, robots, right? Different form factors of the robots doing different uh, doing different workflows on the same shift going in different areas without that, without that, uh, you know, bolt in the floor and, and that fixed automation and what comes with all that to be able to, to, to move it around should you want to change your, your design in the future. So that, that's, that's a definite advantage I see. Um, Mantham, an, another question for you, we, we talked about, you know, the, the higher level, you know, consolidation of the industry and it, why it's always good to, to go with a, with a, with a partner you trust and be around for the long haul and, and what I mean, some of those driving factors of adoption. But, you know, with you and the, and the barcodes team, you know, and your team that you guys have there, you know, how do you help uh, businesses identify the right AMR solution and what are some of the key factors to consider and you mentioned this before to consider successful deployment because it's it's one thing to to get the solution right, but you know to execute and deploy is obviously the the end goal to make that right. So, again, I, I kind of talked over, but what how can how can business how can you help with business identify the right AMR solution and some key factors to consider to ensure that successful deployment? Yeah, so there are a lot of things uh, that drive a successful deployment successful design of a solution. Uh, and I always talk about, instead of talking about you know, robots, robot names, let's talk about workflows, right? Uh, is it end of line? Is it each picking? Is it case picking? Uh, or is it a you know, pallet transport ground to ground? So we, you know, identifying right processes is really important. So, and then again, as, as this industry gets mature, if we see that clear shift and instead of talking about uh, robots and you see that exact same scenario with, uh, let's say another mature industry, which is robotic arms, right? So uh, you talk about palletization, depalletization, that's a workflow. So we always now, you know, have I've started to see that shift, which is identifying the right workflow and the ROI behind it. Is that going to give you ROI? Uh, there are really four factors that I see as, as an ROI uh, input, wherein it's going to give you the best ROI possible if you have these four key requirements. Uh, which is number one, if you are running multiple shifts. Single shift, it's great. AMRs do work. You know, we deploy AMRs for single, single shift. Uh, but you know what's better? More than one shift. Because mm -hmm. robots don't uh, stop working in only one shift, right? So probably you have three shifts, let's say, right? Robots will work 24-7, right? Non-stop. So you'll see the highest return, that's number one, uh, more than one share. Number two is uh, number of moments you're making, whether it is each is, cases or, or pallets, right? If you're moving material a lot from point A to B to C and those num the frequency is high, you're gonna see really easy ROI with AMRs. And it's a no-brainer for our, for our customers. Uh, number three I see is travel distance. I come across customers when they're moving pallets for thousands of feet in, in a warehouse, ground to ground, which is a complete waste of a forklift driver. You could have an AMR doing that transport from point A to point B. 
So if you have long travel distances and, and probably a forklift driver or a manual associate is actually transferring cards or you know walking that distance, robots is, is the is the is the answer. And uh, the fourth one I'll say is the uh, fully burden ring. Uh, well, this is in some cases you know not a deal breaker. Or you'll see some you know differences in like let's say coast to coast, California being the highest paid uh, warehouse associate salary. AMRs make no brainer ROI. So these are like four factors. I always ask customers, do you have these? This is the best use case for you. Number of ships, frequency of uh, moments, uh, travel distance, and, and the fourth one, which is uh, the fully burden rate. Fully burden. Yeah, those are those are fantastic points to consider. Little anecdotal, you you mentioned the robots working twenty four hours. Uh, there's a Zebra customer, and Dave and I are very familiar with it. And they deployed the Fetch robotic system about two years ago. And when they set their schedule up, they actually didn't uh, didn't set up holidays. So the first holiday that came across was Thanksgiving. And on their um, <laughs> on Thanksgiving, they got a call from the alarm system because the robots had woken up and just started working on Thanksgiving morning. So. They do work, you know, all day, every day, if, if you will let them for sure. And anyway. one thing you start seeing is uh, you suddenly start seeing higher throughput. Yeah. Which then makes realization, oh, I could be doing much more with my existing warehouse and manufacturing facility. Yeah. yeah I could be handling, you know, thousands of, uh, you know, let's say pallets per hour or however that is your, your key KPI for throughput. And then that really drives the the business for customers. So, yeah, you definitely can you know get that flywheel going with, with the higher throughput. And you mentioned some great inputs there on the ROI. And I was wondering, Dave, if you have any any other maybe soft we'll call it soft costs as, as we call as we talk about it sometimes that you've seen that have really you know put the you know put the technology over the over the edge as far as yes we want to do it. What, what are some of those soft costs to consider as well? Yeah, good question, Mike. So, you know, as we, you know, get feedback from customers across, you know, more and more uh, deployments, you know, we do see some themes there. Um, I, I think a lot of it has to do with your existing labor force. And, um, you know, I think retention, uh, for example, uh, is one. And, you know, I always, you know, tell the story and, and we, we, we would go back to uh, one of our customers and, and, and do some interviews, you know, across the board just to get feedback and, 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 and get, give that back to, to our team on, on how our solutions uh, are operating. And we had asked one of the warehouse associates uh, that has been working uh, closely with uh, Air Mars for a while, and, and we just kind of asked casually, you know, what's what what do you like best about these robots, you know? And uh, we we were expecting something like, oh, you know, it's it's uh, automating this or automating that, and it, it's moving this, and I don't have to do it or something. But you know, his response was actually, well, we we all get to go home uh, earlier. You know, and so it, it, it painted this picture of, uh, again, what Manton mentioned order uh, earlier, there's there's definitely a shortage. And that means your existing staff, you know, uh, has to carry that burden now. Um, the implications of, uh, you know, overtime and, and, and employee burnout and those kinds of things. So, you know, as as we see greater adoption, you know, uh, sometimes customers and associates, they, they're tentative at first with, with the whole robotics, but at the end, um, you know, they, they end up being very thankful for it, you know, again, from, uh, uh, you know, the soft cost of uh, uh, retention. And, and, and this employee even uh, mentioned that uh, it, it was a great experience getting to work with this new technology, right? So, so I think robotics, you know, offers this kind of, you know, upskilling of working with the latest thing instead of like, okay, well, I just, you know, move this material, you know, for miles and miles a day, you know, for example. Uh, just quickly, Mike, I think, you know, so so I, I think uh, uh, empowering your your existing labor. And I think the, the whole uh, warehouse space, the floor space aspect of it, um, it was sort of a, uh, perhaps a fringe benefit that maybe, you know, no one really considered in the beginning uh, with these deployments. But as uh, our customers started to 
uh, replace fixed uh, motorized conveyor um, with uh, AMRs. Well, it just it just opened up uh, again, you know, a, a, a whole new world for them because they could once they ripped that out, they could replace it with, for example, high density storage. And now they're as a result, uh, their capacity is like uh, increased significantly now. You know, finding space is always the, the hardest thing, I think, in, in a manufacturing shop floor or uh, a warehouse. And I think this is another, uh, definitely another soft benefit, another fringe benefit with uh, working with mobile robotics. I think we also came across a customer that wherein we saw uh, improvements in noise inside a warehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's exactly. A, yeah. There's those impacts as well, right? So you've got your, you, you, the one customer I think Matt was talking about had a very loud, noisy conveyor system. And so the overall job satisfaction went up just because of the ambient, the ambient Correct. noise went down and people could actually hear themselves not only talk to each other, but think throughout their, their day during their job. So there's, there are these really? aspects of the, of the product that help, you know, make people's jobs more enjoyable, which I think, you know, it's not necessarily factored in our hard cost of the ROI, but, but it's something definitely to consider, I would say for sure. Something to not just throw by the wayside. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great example. Yeah. And, and, and speaking on ROI again, Mantham, because I told you as we come back to it, we've been talking about this for a minute. I think a lot of people want to know, you know, when, when you and the Barcos team are out there, you know, evaluating the possibilities, potentials for these solutions, can you provide any insights onto a typical ROI that the business can expect from implementing AMRs? I know things are, you know, every implementation is different, every workflow is different and facility, but what have you guys seen in, in your experience? Yeah, so I can take this one and then, you know, uh, David chime in as you like. So uh, I want to take in this two ways. Number one, the CapEx versus RAS that's been booming this discussion throughout the industry. Uh, but typical ROI of these systems used to be a couple of years. And, and now it's less than one year, for sure, typically with AMR system. And this ROI gets even uh, further shorter with robot as a service. Okay. And here are a few things why. So you would typically for AGV systems and conveyor systems, you would pay uh, upfront millions of dollars for project, right? And I've had a customer that said, you know, we, we, we uh, you know, we want to deploy AGVs. We signed a PO, $10 million. AGVs, uh, the lead time is two years. Deployment time is one year. And this is completely opposite scenario on, on a technology like touch robotics and AMRs, right? Wherein the lead times are really short, we deploy quickly within, within a week time frame, and quickly turn around and, and go live for the project. Uh, but the other factor with RAS is no upfront cost, right? Except installation and then deployment and integration. This is, this is no upfront cost and everything is embedded into uh, the robot as a service, right? So your existing uh, cost structure under OPEX, which you pay for your warehouse associates, uh, salary and your other OPEX costs, it can be easily implemented into, uh, into the similar scenario for robotics, right? So you don't need bigger approvals on projects. All you do is we do a uh, you know, ROI calculation for you and, and, and say, uh, you know, guys, this is a 10 robot system. It's gonna give you this much saving yearly and just implement into your existing OPEX, right? So really easy with adoption of uh, robot as a service. And I always say this, there's a lot of, you know, customers demanding CapEx, which we both do which Zebra and, and Barcodes offer CapEx for customers that look for CapEx. Uh, but an easy way to think about this is uh, think about it in a software as a service type of approach because hardware is great. Robot hardware is amazing, right? But it's really the software behind it that makes it autonomous, right? And navigate in your warehouse. 
and software has a lot more value than the hardware itself right so this software that the the, hard, the robot you're buying you're actually buying saas and and this saas gets updated every month and every year with software updates to make robots more efficient more faster probably the robot you have will do 10 more tasks and 10 more workflows in the future right so it's really software updates that matters the most with a new technology like this so uh, think of it as software as a service and, and and that that makes it easy for a lot of customers for amr adoption yeah i'm i'm really glad glad you glad you brought up those two distinctions about the two different ways to to go about you know acquiring purchasing these types of solutions so i'll ask you dave um you know what is zebra's ras robot as a service how does that compare to others and and what is all included in that in that ras what does the customer get for the, for that uh that as a service model yeah great question so you know it's structured around um a a monthly fee right um uh and then not only are you getting uh the the hardware and the software pieces as Munthan just mentioned um you get all the uh the upgrades and and developments over the air uh as we add new features uh, as we add new functionality uh uh improvements um to workflows um uh collaborative tools analytics the 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 whole package um those come along you know with the with with the ras deal but the other piece mike is the um is is the maintenance right and, and so the ras is always going to be is is all inclusive so you're not going to worry about uh, for example any type of preventative or you know uh responsive maintenance of you know spare parts so these these robots already require very little maintenance you know um but we do include that as 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 part of the ras contract um so again you're all in on you know one one monthly cost so it just makes it very easy and i just just to add to what monthly said i think because of that um the way that ras is structured and because uh that we're cloud enabled and makes you know we can deploy very quickly you know some of the customers that we work with we're we're up and running in literally 3 days right you you're up and running so when you think about ROI it's it's again it's the very powerful piece of it is this time to value i i, I always kind of look back to like the conveyor piece right you know you the, that that equipment could be weeks out weeks you know 16 18 20 weeks i don't know how the lead times look now as far as the supply chain but um you know if you're up in 3 days with with amrs you probably would have had many iterations and many modifications of your workflow to refine and optimize before you even get that that fixed infrastructure in 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 the door you know what i mean so 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 you can see that time to value much much quicker with this combination of uh you know ras and and uh cloud deployment and, and i'll touch on something that i think both you guys have mentioned is is about the flexibility and the 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 ways that we can add additional robots into a, an operation right so as you mentioned with fixed conveyor and automation you know in the past i've i've worked with different providers and vendors in that and and basically you have to build that out for a five years in the future what is your future look like and you're building you're building that that for that capacity that you don't yet have but you may have in the future with with the robots as a service you, you can you can build as you grow you can add to the robots right so you don't have to necessarily you know build the the church for easter sunday as they say you can you can work your way to that uh, eventual outcome hopefully so um that, that's a great great point great point yeah Yeah, I, I that's one thing I think that's one of the major advantages that I always see is that you can you can grow into them. You don't have to buy a fleet of 100. You can start with 5 or 10 and 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 as your business grows, you can grow into into adding more yeah. even different, different types. So, yeah. I, I, I want to ask one thing of Mantham, sorry, one thing of Mantham on 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 this this is the last question I'll ask about the RAS. What are you seeing as your your typical, you know, duration, time duration terms on these types of contracts or these you know what is the what is the barcodes team seeing yeah we're, we're pretty flexible towards customers but the typical ask for us is definitely 3 to 5 years and that's where a lot of these customers see a lot of value in something like this 
uh, been proven in three to five years. And in next five years, the technology will be somewhere else. Even the hardware will be somewhere else. I talked about software updates, but let's say even the hardware is updated, the existing hardware is no longer uh, you know, capable of things that will uh, be needed to do in the next five years, you easily remove the existing robots and deploying robots under, and that's the beauty of robot as a service and versus why not to buy these equipments outright, right? So uh, I don't know, David, do you have anything to add here? Yeah, no, I think, I, I think, you know, for sure. I think that's uh, what we're seeing and, and, you know, um, uh, across the board with uh, our, our customers and, and different experiences. I mean, you know, it, it it's, I think it becomes, you know, uh, it goes back to what you said, Nathan. I think it's about the workflows, right? I, I, I think you, you you look at uh, uh, key metrics, and uh, you know, there's uh, uh, you, you're always going to look for or strive for a, a specific uh, outcome. Okay, for example, uh, like a UPH or something like that. But I just, you know, I, I, we we feel like with the solution. Um, uh, you, you know, you look at your operation holistically and then how you can benefit moving forward. Sure, I think I, I think we've got the uh, the CapEx and RAS wrapped up in a, in a pretty little bow right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll go on to something that I, I know that, that they we've talked about and, and the Barcodes team definitely has talked about with their with their customers about these solutions, right? So, you know, Dave, Zebra and Fetch, producing, manufacturing these systems, you know, are there any ethical or safety considerations associated with the use of mobile robots, right? Um, I mean, are, are these, are these, are they safe, right? That's the first question I know a lot of people ask. And then how do manufacturers like, like Zebra Fetch address them in design and the design process, you know, first off, and then, then within the implementation itself. So, so that's a really interesting question, Mike. So, um, uh, you know, at the Automate show uh, uh, just a couple months ago, uh, you know, we had the uh, UL team, you know, stop by the booth and, and you know, it's starting to get, uh, you know, noticed more, you know, in these uh, discussions with, you know, regulatory, you know, and stuff like that, especially because, you know, as you mentioned, the the safety aspect of it, um, you know, they're, they are designed to work closely with uh, humans and in and around dynamic environments, you know, you got pallet jacks, you got people driving forklifts and all kinds of stuff. So I've seen, you know, golf carts running through there and, you know, so, so, so it's all these obstacles that, that you do have to consider. And again, they are designed to uh, work in that environment. They, they're not, you know, closed off or behind a fence, right? Like a large robot arm or even some of the uh, goods to person type, type systems. So, um, to answer your question, well, you know, on on the on the fetch side, I think safety has always been at the forefront. We actually um, design our, our parameters around uh, a, a safety standard, and we have been leveraging the uh, ANSI RIA, and it's called R fifteen o eight, is the uh, latest uh, safety conformance uh, that was released a little while ago that covers uh, industrial mobile robotics and how they should behave and operate uh, around people. It considers uh, the mobile aspect uh, of, of the robot um, and, and, and the technology, how it can replan. And uh, uh, you know, I think we finally caught up to uh, the, the, the standards have finally caught up to the technology uh, because we've been on the AGV standard for so long. You know, and, and it just doesn't apply anymore. You know, it's uh, you, you're not going to be able to cover all the bases with with just um, the the AGV standard. So we we bake that in, Mike. You know, uh, with uh, with with all our hardware. And the interesting thing with our stuff is, I'll just mention real quickly is, uh, think of the AMR as an entire system, right? Uh, uh, the the audience is familiar with the uh, uh, autonomous mobile robot base with a top module, right? And uh, Zebra designs everything uh, as a whole. So you have the top module compatible uh, with the uh, base module, but everything is uh, certified as one whole system. And I think that's that's an important aspect of it. 
uh, right? As you consider, you know, risk assessments and 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 safety and regulatory and all that. Hundred percent. Just last question here, and Mantham, if you want to expound upon that, how you and the barcodes team are, you know, your customers asking you about this, and then how do you respond to these these questions about, you know. AMR technology, is it safe? Is it something that we should be implementing? You know, is, is this something that's gonna, you know, hurt my, my workforce or, you know, injure and impact? Yeah, so, you know, in, in our process, really, Barcode's team uh, goes on site uh, to do a site evaluation, really thorough site evaluation, whether it's the aisle widths, whether it is, uh, you know, Wi-Fi, and, 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 you know, uh, breaking the signals and you know, stuff like that, covering the entirety of the warehouse, or uh, whether it is uh, inclinations and ramps and wet surfaces, is it safe to navigate for an AMR? So, you know, our solutions engineering team is really well equipped to do these surveys. And we always do that before even starting to design a full blown solution for our customers, right? Is, uh, safety for us is 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 uh, high, um, and then automation. So we always keep in mind that it's always going to be safe to deploy these AMRs, and they're going to work five years down the road alongside foot traffic, alongside forklift traffic, right? Um, but I've seen I've, you know deployed fetch AMRs, and you know it's really it really takes for customers to see it in person how safe they are. And that's why we even, you know, visit uh, other customer sites where Fetch has deployed or even uh, the demo centers right, where Fetch has been deployed. So uh, it's it takes time, right? But it, it uh, you know, it's the, consol the overall consolidation, consolidation in the AMR industry education is getting there uh, to understand how AMR was safer, right? Fantastic. I think it's definitely on top of people's minds. They're thinking about safety, right? It's, it's, it's something that everyone thinks about and needs to be thinking about, but as these become more ubiquitous throughout, you know, facilities everywhere. Um, now, I, I don't know, Brendan, do we have any? Yeah, quickly, I wanted to hop in here quick and we can switch over to the Q&A. We've had a couple questions come in. If you haven't submitted any already, please feel free. You can do it through the chat or the Q&A box. Um, one of the questions I saw come up, and we may have covered this a little bit, but um, do we ha have customers reported any noticeable difference in employee retention after deploying robots? And what are the uh, effects that have been observed? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, nice. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We didn't talk about this earlier. <laughs> Maybe just quickly, you know, mention again. I mean, I think, um, I, I think the answer is yes. You know, we are seeing that uh, because we know so, some of these operations. It's it's so tough to find people, and then uh, it's so competitive for the existing labor um, that you, any little edge <laughs> uh, can 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 provide you an advantage as far as. Uh, the retention is, is is concerned, but specifically the res results have been well. Look, I'm I'm walking so much less, and uh, now I can redirect my time to uh, higher value tasks. For example, opens up other opportunities. So instead of like you know uh, uh, transporting uh, moving material man manually, uh, uh, maybe now I'm in charge of uh, uh, inventory management, for example, and that opens up. Uh, a, a different uh, ca career path, I think, for for associates. Um, also, just working with robotics so closely in general, they, they they really gain a valuable experience. You know, something to 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 add to the uh, to the resume as well. Um, so I think it it it, it does have a, a significant improvement. I mean. Um, I think it all also does come back to that to that burnout. You know, um, you know, we've walked through some of these facilities where where it's it's just very tough, and 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 you all know those environments. You know, it can be extremely hot, it can be extremely cold. It's 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 not the the the, the best place to be. But if you have a little bit of help, uh, it, it it does make a difference. It does make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, and if you give uh, associates a choice. 
of working with, well, you know, let's say two warehouses, one with robots and one without. I think it's clear choice wherein I don't have to walk. And, you know, it's, it's really the shift in the job roles, right? Uh, wherein right. You'll, you'll start seeing more of uh, maintenance and supervisory roles versus, you know, is, you know, walking long distances, right? Uh, and, 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 or whether it is watch the entire automation remotely and make sure it's functioning right. So, right, the role changes completely and with a, with a little unknown training, right? So, uh, and obviously you're going to start seeing a lot of upskilling and, and, you know, higher retention rate. Yeah, if I could add one thing too, real quick on that note, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, go ahead. It, it actually, what I've seen and what we've, we've observed with some of our customers and one in particular is it actually increases the labor pool that, that can come and work at your facility right now. I don't have to be maybe have someone walk that 10 miles a day. I can walk a mile a day and do the same job. It's, it's an accessibility issue. I think we have a, a, a customer that is, um, employs a lot of visually impaired people and they use the robots for that very reason, right? So the robots are bringing goods and services. So it's, it's actually increased the labor pool uh, for them. So I, I think that you know it does take some change management to get to get it right. You can't just deploy them and say here you go. There's definitely some change management that has to happen. Um, but you have that right, the right workflow. I think the people really embrace embrace the robots. From what I've seen, I have I've yet to find a facility that we've deployed them in where people just just don't like them and don't want to be around them. Thanks, guys. Here's another one that came in. Um, what's the major difference between AMRs and AGVs? David, go ahead. Maybe, do you want to take that one? <laughs> uh, I'll take it. Uh, this is my favorite question. So, uh, <laughs> well, you know, AGVs, whether it's line following robot or, uh, you know, whatever their fixed infrastructure is, right? AGVs require fixed infrastructure so that they can navigate well. Right, uh, and it's not very flexible com compared to AMRs. What where AMRs play is, you don't need to change your warehouse, you don't need to change your uh, workflows, or you don't need to change your layout. It can be just as easy as just throwing in robots, right? So that they're gonna, because they're not gonna navigate themselves with any obstacles, any avoid, you know, uh, humans or uh, traffic or foot traffic or you know, forklift traffic. So uh, that's the biggest difference in my opinion, right? Uh, uh, AGVs versus AMRs, AMRs are a lot more flexible and uh, can be easily changed into different workflows. Can do multiple different workflows in a single shift or in multiple shifts, which AZVs are only you know, built for a particular workflow. So, uh, so that's, that's, in my opinion, biggest difference. David, what do you wanna say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's a that's a great one. Yeah, I love this question as well. And you know, the way I kind of, I, I, I describe it sometimes is, is so the AGV is, is it, it moves on a fixed path. So it's similar to like just getting on a train and then going stop to stop. But an AMR uh, is uh, dynamic and replans. So that's basically like calling an Uber, right? You know, I don't have to go from this stop to this stop. It's, it's on demand, first of all, right? Because I can request this pickup and delivery uh, anywhere and to go to anywhere in my facility. Um, so it, it, again, so you have much more flexibility, you know, you're not tied to just following a, a, a single path, you know, around your facility. And, and, and that is one of the key, key differences. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, got a couple more here. Um, we talked on this just a little bit, I think, but how do you envision uh, the future of mobile robotics? What are some like specific technologies that might drive further advancement? Yeah, again, second favorite question. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'll take this one and then you take a stab, David or Mike. Uh, 
and and i think a lot of you who visited promat saw some really unique solutions there at promat such as humanoids and then you know drones and you know, a lot of other solutions so you know i think the really the aim of this industry is as we all know which started with amazon and now the full adoption of automation and lights off wherein no worker inside and it's all fully driven by robots and automation right uh, that's definitely is the end goal and, and there is a lot of investment being made in in ai and robotics right now especially in in as we hear humanoid and you know i have my takes on humanoid and then where it's going but uh, what you'll see right now uh, for general purpose robots is that the roi isn't there for a technology like humanoids because let's take an example in your warehouse you'll have 10 different workflows and and the goal of something like humanoid is is to do all those 10 things together right and and be flexible but however the technology itself is so expensive today that the roi isn't going to be there for next you know whatever uh, 10 15 years uh, and and in in our view at least we see is you will have 10 different smaller robots to do 10 different uh, applications and workflows and that's going to drive the biggest roi for you and that's where fetch zebra and barcodes is focused on how do we uh conceptualize and 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 deploy robots for different applications and how then how can they work all together so interoperability in our opinion is is the next uh big chapter for us how can these different robots all work together under 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 single platform right so i think this is where the industry is going probably in in 20 30 years yes humanoid may be the answer but today as we stand for next 20 years it's going to be individualized uh, workflows and individual robots that will come together to form an entire warehouse automation in my opinion humanoids are a little overkill david what do you want to say yeah no 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 thanks for that um that take i was going to say you know what we're working on you know at at zebra now um as far as the capabilities and technologies is you know we're 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 injecting uh social behaviors uh into these robots and so what does that mean that's so so basically it's it's enabling a robot to behave more like a human okay so uh and the impact to the users are for example uh if you are in the warehouse and walking down an aisle uh you would expect the 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 robot to move uh, or to hear to for example the the rules of the road as we know just like you're walking down a sidewalk for example right you, you in the US will will buy us to the right okay and so 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 little things like that um uh, that 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 helps uh basically uh, 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 give the associates a, a a better perception of 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 how this robot's going to behave and and not that it's just running around like crazy <laughs> okay so we we're, we're far past you know uh like the roombas of the world where it's just like you know bumping into something and just moving right so so uh, but it does have implications with with safety as mike mentioned earlier um but also efficiency right so 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 if 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 you're adhering to uh, or biasing towards a, a a certain side of the aisle um then 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 you're not surprised right you're not surprised especially if you're driving a forklift you know you, you don't want that robot crossing the street or crossing that aisle uh right in front of you for example so those types of uh technology and behaviors and the other pieces what you mentioned meant then um uh the the machine learning piece you know uh as zebra we're starting to leverage that uh more um we have the benefit of um you know being a, a cloud based so you know we 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 can process a lot of you know do a lot of the compute you know in the cloud and so what we use machine learning for um is are are things like again safety related for example like a forklift detection uh those types of things because not only do you want to uh navigate around uh something like a forklift and you want to be very careful around it but 
but there's the piece of the, the there's the vertical piece if it's if it's lifting it does it have its times up or down or is it lifting a, a load or is it not you know can i move uh, can the robot move to to a safe uh, um, area around there so again it's all these sort of considerations we talked earlier about the safety piece but i think these technologies are are, are definitely driving um uh you know better and better uh, uh operations and and the interoperability for sure you know i think uh, in the near future you you will have robots working with other robots uh, uh in a warehouse yeah okay well that's all the questions that i see uh coming in here so i think we can just about wrap it up thanks again everybody for joining uh, if you have any additional questions, please reach out to us. Uh, you can email us at robotics at barcodesinc.com. Visit our website at www.barcodesinc.com. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Zebra, and our panelists for hopping on. Um, it was a really engaging discussion, and we are uh, excited to continue to do more in the future.